Welcome. What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to the first video that I've made in about two or three days, which I, again, I want to apologize for. I said I was going to start banging out daily uploads on this video, but as usual, the international breaks come round, and because of that, there's just been barely anything to talk about. I wanted to do a couple watch-alongs. I literally put one for the last England game and I got about 30 no's in a minute because everyone was saying Southgate Ball was going to be dreadful. And as usual, Southgate Ball hasn't failed to disappoint. I don't know what the England-Belgium game is. Right now it's playing as I record and I think it's 1-1. But regardless, just got to hope they get the win and we just move. But we're going to talk about the predicted lineups for the next three games because... That's probably something we can talk about, I guess. We know there's going to be rotation through the three games, and it's three tough games in the space of a week. Last two games get tougher as the games go ahead as well. We've got Southampton first on the Saturday before we face Sevilla in midweek in our first game of the Champions League season. And then on Sunday or Saturday, I think it's a Saturday, Chelsea versus Manchester United. And on God, we can't lose to Ole again. And I mean that. I don't even want to sound overconfident on camera. But seriously, if Ole gets another Premier League win against us, he's got some judge against this club. We're going to go through the predicted lineup for the first three games. Before I start this video, as per usual, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Press the subscribe button as well and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. I'm so bored of saying the same words over and over again. But yeah, please smash those buttons if you haven't done so already. Now let's go straight into the first predicted lineup. Right, first predicted lineup should be coming up now. And that, sh that is the lineup that I think we're going to see for Chelsea versus Southampton. Again, if you guys have any disagreements, let me know down in the comment section below. And yeah, let's go straight into this lineup. We start off in goal. Obviously, Kepa has to start. And it's annoying. I mean, especially straight after getting Mendy in and him having his first clean sheet of his Chelsea career for us. He comes off with an injury in international duty. And it's just so peak Chelsea, isn't it? But yeah, that means Kepa has to start. And... If Kepa's comments since Mendy signed or anything, it sounds like he is still determined to get his first team spot back. He doesn't think it's all over. And it makes me a little bit optimistic. I, I mean, I can try and be optimistic as much as I want because other than that, it's just going to be all negativity. But if Kepa is serious about getting his first team position back, he needs to have an amazing performance in this match. And I know Kepa knew a, a new goalkeeper was coming throughout the summer. His performances were still dreadful. But now one's arrived. Are we going to see a different Kepa? Probably not. But, I mean, let's just try and be optimistic. Because if we're not going to be optimistic, then we just already know we're conceding a goal and the clean sheet's gone already. But who knows? It's 2020. Crazy things happen. Maybe Kepa comes back and has a clean sheet. Maybe has an amazing performance. I don't know. But I'm going to be optimistic on this one. So I think Kepa starts... At right back, we're going to go for Azpilicueta. I think his impact on the team has just got stronger and stronger as the years progressed. And I'm not saying he displaces James in terms of position throughout the season. But right now, I think especially with Thiago Silva assimilating and still trying to learn the, Eng the English language, it makes perfect sense to have him right next to Thiago Silva. And I will say I did put Kurt Zuma at right centre-back for this one, but little typo switching round i want tiago silva on the right side next to him as well back to makes sense kurt zuma and tiago silva i think are the two center backs that we need to persist with throughout the season and i think even in the case of frank lampard he's come under a lot of criticism for not sticking with the same defensive lineup i think the stat was uh, in 41 games, there was 22 different defensive partnerships. And I think for this season, one of the things Frank Lampard has to do is have a consistent defensive line. So I think this is going to be the defensive lineup you see for the majority of the season. If there's any changes, I think maybe Reese James overtakes Aspel as the season progresses. Right now, though, I think that's the back four we're going to see. Ben Chilwell as well on the left-hand side. I've already said he's the best left back that we've had since Ashley Cole. Even though the bar is in hell... He is raising the bar already, so Ben Chilwell just has to start. In midfield, I have left Mateo Kovacic out. I've gone for the Jorginho and Kante pivot, but I think they've been the two better midfielders for us throughout the season. Yes, Mateo Kovacic is our player of the season, but his performances haven't been the same this season. And I think 
right now it doesn't really make sense to put him in. I don't think he gets in over Kante. I don't think he gets in over Jorginho as well. And I think it's going to be a sim similar sort of game to the Crystal Palace game where we're going to have the majority of possession. We're going to have the majority of the ball. So you need a player like Jorginho who's going to dictate play and continue to start attacks, continue to recycle possession and just continue to have control of the ball because a player like Mateo Kovacic, I think, too similar to N'Golo Kante and I don't think we need both of those. I think you need one or the other. So I'm going to go Jorginho and Kante in midfield. Um, as the attacking midfielders, Christian Pulisic had the, had the final 10 minutes against Southampton. So I think he starts in this match as well. Also because we just, I need to see Timo Werner centrally. The last two, three games, he's been playing on the left-hand side. It doesn't suit him. He likes coming in off that left-hand side, but only if his original position is, a, is, at, is up front. So he can roam around and try and mess around the defence and try and take players around with him. It doesn't make sense to have him fixed on that left-hand side because he's just too much of a passenger. It's not the better position for him. If anything, I'd make more of a case to play Timo Werner on the right-hand side because I think he can still make those runs and stretch defences, but he's doing it more on his stronger foot. And also with that extra burst of pace, if you have someone like Tammy Abraham or Olivier Giroud up front, I could easily see him just making him space for himself on that right-hand side and whipping in across. Something that he can't do on that left-hand side. He has to be a bit more predictable and cut inside and get onto his stronger foot. And I think that's where he struggled on that left-hand side a bit too much for us. So it, I want Timo Werner centrally, so Pulisic starts. Callum Hudson-Odoi starts as well. I think we do need to assimilate him more into a starting position. Get him more comfortable with playing regular games for us so he can build his stamina up, build his confidence up, and hopefully you see better performances from him as well. Kai Havertz as well, to be honest, I don't really think I need to explain that one too much. Even if he hasn't shown up in the Premier League much in the goals assist tally, he has had amazing performances. I do think he's going to keep growing and growing into that position. But yeah, this is my starting lineup for the Southampton game. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And let's go straight into the next one. Moving on to the next game, Sevilla versus Chelsea. And I'm going to have the lineup on here now. That was a poor click, but we move. And we're going to start off in goal. In goal, I think... It's going to be either Mendy or Willy Caballero, but it all depends on Mendy's fitness. If Mendy doesn't, if Mendy doesn't play, I think it's going to be Willy Caballero just for the sake of Kepa starting the game before that. And you want to be fair to throughout the whole team and give everyone a decent amount of game time, especially in goal. So I think Willy Caballero is going to start. And also the same way with how Kepa's stock's dropped, no one's really going to complain about which one starts out of either or. I don't think either should be our starting goalkeeper. I don't think either makes a case to take number two off the other, though, if you get what I mean. In defence, because I just don't want to see Emerson or Alonso near this starting lineup again against a semi-decent side, as for Laqueta is going to start on the left-hand side. Reese James are also going to have on the right because he still does need to get that sort of regular game time and he's our only other right back as well, so he slots in easily. Back two as well, but with Manchester United in mind, I'm going to rest both Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva and we're going to put in Tomori and Christensen. And you can make a case for Antonio Rudiger to start because he does want to fight back into the squad. But I also think with Lampard, in his mindset, he's going to think, OK, these guys are still young players, but they need to start taking a bit more responsibility for themselves. I don't need Tamori next to a leader or Christensen next to a leader. Maybe both of them need to play with each other and start to just grow into their role a little bit. Tamori, I'm not worried about his performances. I think he could have a good performance. Christensen as well, I think his performances have flown under the radar. I think he's been very solid defensively. It's just you're going to forget about that because of the stupid red card against Liverpool, which is understandable, but I still think he's been very solid defensively. I'm not really too worried about that lineup because our worries usually come from the left hand side because of Alonso or Emerson. I still think that's a very solid back line, and you've got Azpilicueta to work as a leader behind the, net, behind the other two as well. So I'm happy with that back line. I'm going to go the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot as well because we're going to bring Kovacic back into the starting lineup. And I also think both teams are going to be fighting a lot for possession. It's going to be a very strong midfield battle. So I want two players that that suit each other and suits each other's styles of play just excellently. And that's the pair of them. Um, going on to the attacking midfield roles, I think Hakim Ziyech is going to start because I think he'll personally be rested and brought on as a sub for the Southampton game. I don't see him starting the full game. He's only had the 30 minute. He only had a little bit of game time for Morocco and came back from injury. 
And so I don't think it'd be start. It'd be smart to start him in the first game out against Southampton. That don't make too enough sense for me. So he'll start the game on against Sevilla with a mind to hopefully start the Manchester United game as well. Kai Havertz, I think, will also be rested, but. If he starts, I wouldn't be surprised either, but I think Mason Mount plays in this game anyway. And if Kai Havertz starts, that means I think Mason Mount's probably going to play on the wings with Ziyech. But hudson Odoi in this lineup, I think we'll start on the left-hand side. I think we'll go for Mason Mount. I think we'll try and rotate around the attacking lineup. I think hudson Odoi will also come off as one of the earlier subs, but that's my attacking three for me. And we're going to go Tammy Abraham up front, because I think Lampard's just going to prefer him to Olivier Giroud. I wouldn't mind either of them starting. I think Tammy Abraham's performances over this entire season does make me feel optimistic. I do think he can have a good performance. I just don't want to see us do the same thing that we usually do where we just ignore Olivier Giroud for long periods and then rely on him towards the end of the season. It's worked for us, but let's just incorporate Olivier Giroud a little bit more because he can still bring the best out of the players around him. When it comes to up front, Tammy or, or Olivier Giroud for me, either or could start, but I think he's going to go with uh, Tammy Abraham, so that's going to be the lineup for me. Moving on to the last lineup, Chelsea versus Manchester United. Huge game for us, sixth game of the season, and I think this is where we're really going to start to see the team gelling, and I think you're going to start to see the same sort of lineup showing in most games because all of our players will be back from injury now. Players will start to gel together a little bit more. Hopefully, Timo Werner will be back in his natural position of up front again. So, yeah, lineup's popping up right here. Mendy starts because he should be back for the Manchester United game from what sources are saying. Precautionary, maybe the severe match, but I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Willy Caballero side. I want to have the main focus on having Mendy fit for this match. Reese James as well goes in on the right hand side because Azpilicueta would have had a lot of game time over the last week. It wouldn't be right to start him on that right hand side. Also with Manchester United, I think they're going to be trying to counter attack us in this match. So you want a bit more legs coming down that right hand side. Azpilicueta, as much as I love him, pace is fading. So I'd rather go for Reese James on the right hand side. Again, the rest of the back four just speak for themselves. We've got to have Zuma and Silva together and nobody else except for Ben Chilwell, unless you want to put Azpilicueta in there again. But like we said, Aspi needs that rest. So that's going to be the back four for us. James, Silva, Zuma and Ben Chilwell. In midfield, we're going to go back to the Jorginho and Kante pivot because, again, this is the one that's been working for us over the last few days. I mean, the last few games. So we're going to persist with that same lineup as well. Hakim Ziyech will also have his first Premier League start, in my opinion. I don't see him starting against Southampton, but I do think he'll be back for this game. And other than that, the rest of the lineup usually speaks for themselves. Timo Werner is a shoe in to start. Kai Havertz has to start in the middle. I'd not see Ziyech on the right. Maybe you can have them interchange around a little bit, but as they're starting positions, I want to see Havertz in that middle. I want to see Ziyech coming in on the right. Pulisic as well to just cause chaos coming in and outside on either foot. And Timo Werner up front. Please, guys, I'm begging you, don't lose to Ole again. Especially with the state that Manchester United are in. If Ole takes another win against us, I don't even know what I'm going to do. But, guys, this is my lineup for the first for the next three games of the season. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with any of the decisions I've made? Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the chills. Thank you.